the executive producers of this show, Platinum Star Media Group, Garson Silver's Entertainment, Raw Entertainment, and Livestreamers.com. Now, my next guest has such a vast array of accomplishments, there are too many to remember, so forgive me if I read them off. Marie Lamel, playwright for Harambe Harambe, all pulled together, which we're going to talk about soon, which will be at a theater here in Los Angeles. Marie is the playwright. Her journey in the entertainment industry began as a professional boxing team publicist. Interesting. Ever evolving, though, Marie has mastered the roles of publicist, casting director, film producer, screenwriter, and book author. An award-winning journalist, she has written nearly 700 articles and authored two weekly columns, Health Matters and the RX Report, for the Los Angeles Wave newspaper. She also writes for other U.S.-based and international publications. She is the recipient of an MBA from the University of Laverne and a journalism certificate from UCLA. How do you do all that, Marie? Like anybody else, time management, and just being brilliant, what can I say? You can say where it all began. Where it all began, that's, that's a broad question. Where are you from? But I am from Los Angeles, a true native, okay. roots in Louisiana. Roots in Louisiana. Absolutely, so the, the Southern hospitality is, a, is live and well. Right. Yes. I understand you also have a political background too? Uh, yes, I've been fortunate to be a commissioner in the city of Glendale on the Commission of Status of Women, also to be appointed by who is now the mayor of Los Angeles, Karen Bass. She was the Speaker of the House th at that time, so for a state board position some years ago. But I've always believed in civic duty. Wow, so in addition to that, you are, you have a, a, you're a publicist for how many, how many artists? Uh, I try not to count because it, I'm always counting. Right. You know, I'm always expanding, uh, but I've been fortunate to help with a lot of actors, directors, writers, producers, politicians, nonprofit, uh, pastors. I mean, it goes on and on because I am a generalist. I'm able to promote and write about and provide a campaign, which is about anybody. Anybody. Well, Me? anybody that. Of course, okay. of course. Nice. Very easy. <laughs> I'm easy. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm not that easy, but <laughs> that's you, not what I heard. But go ahead. You've made things easy for me and yes. for all of us here. So tell us about Harambe Harambe. What is that from? That's a Kwanzaa word. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, originally, I created a or wrote a play called Kwanzaa, a celebration of unity. Okay. That was during COVID. Okay. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be uh, given the opportunity by writing, it was a part of a competition. I wrote a act, and the Roby Theater, run by Ben Guillory, and co-founded with Danny Glover, um, liked it, loved it. And three months later after I submitted it, I just thought, oh no, there's no way, because I've never written a play before. Uh, so they said, we'd like to commission you to write a full play. Mm -hmm. And um, after I picked up my ground, I called one of my writers at the time to help me with formatting because that's not my thing. So we came up with, you know, somewhere around 80 pages over about a six month period and it was produced online through Zoom, through COVID, two years, two Kwanzaa seasons ago. Kwanzaa is between December 26th right. through January 1st right. every year. So you had never written a play before? I had not. Wow. What made you realize you could do this? Because where Where does that come from? I'm a storyteller. Okay. I've always been able to take something and turn it into a story. And it works for me. So this play, is this your pet your, your your passion project? Or do you have a children's book in your heart that you're working on also? Oh, uh, you can still talk to somebody, but yes. <laughs> really? This this is a well, first of all. The, the play is definitely a passion for me because it, we can get into that later, but I really feel that uh, it has a greater message than just one time a year. Uh, I do have a children's book that I am, I've rolled out, but it's been a soft rollout. Okay. 
and it's a fun children's book okay. that I will talk about in our next show okay. when we're actually inside the salt cave. Okay, all right. <laughs> there. So children's book later, but right now let's focus on Harambe, Harambe. Yes. So the, so the Roby Theater, is that Roby as in Paul Robeson? Yes, yes, yes it is. The, the Paul Robeson. That was yeah, his right. nickname, Roby. Wow. Yes. So they decided to name it after him, honoring him, because not only was he a stage actor, but he was an accomplished um, he was an activist. Right. He was a singer. Uh, he was uh, not just stage, but you know, film, uh, book author. I mean, just a all-around Renaissance man, if you will, who did not have to stand up for black rights uh, because he was loved by all you know diverse demographics. But because he became that activist, it really hurt his career. Mm. But he, he to the point where they took his passport away. Really? So yes, he was more adored overseas than he was in America. Oh. So because um, Danny Glover and then Hillary decided to, in the 90s, it's been around, uh, I guess close to 40 years, okay. to have a home for black theater right. and for storytellers like myself. So I'm so grateful for them to have this opportunity, this platform, to do something different. So your MBA, what's that in? That's a master's in business administration. Okay, that's what it means, I guess. It uh, is, but that, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't go to college. It, it, you don't have to go to know. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> Not at all. But, you know, being an entrepreneur, I felt that I needed that financial background, that business background, uh, that foundation. We all need that really to, well, you don't need the MBA, but you need to understand business. Okay. Yes. So you manage the business careers of various people, and they entrust you with their careers? Uh, I, yeah, I guess you could say business careers, but it's more or less their entertainment journey. Okay. So it can turn into a bigger business other than managing their acting career. And that's how I've gotten the opportunity to produce on film, to be the content creator, and to be uh, just an overall kind of whatever you need when it comes to, I had to pivot during COVID. I became a COVID-19 compliant officer. Really? You know, I'm the one running around, taking your temperature, making sure you take the, the test, um, that you fill out a form saying, you know, all the things that you don't be not feeling sick or coughing or whatever, whatnot. And, you know, it was like policing a set. You know, everybody all of a sudden turned right. into babies. Oh, my God, you know, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. Well, then you're not working today. Right. You know, so, but, but it kept the set safe. And that was more important to me, you know, than anything. So your boxing background. Let's do some name dropping. Who have you worked with? Huh, okay, interesting. I'll say our biggest accomplishment mm -hmm. was matching the fight between Tony Tubbs and Mike Tyson in Japan. Wow. Really? Yes. In Japan? In Japan. So that was wonderful, outstanding, a, 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 you know, an experience that you'll never forget mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, while I had traveled to certain parts of the world, that was my first time there, and also in that capacity. You know, this is a, that's a male-dominated field, yes. not just because of who's in the ring, but who's around the ring. But I, I was fortunate to have some mentors, especially in the photography side, the publicist side, investment relationship side. So um, it, was, it was really a great experience. The others were part of the Mongoose boxing team. Now, the famous person behind the name Mongoose was Archie Moore. Yes. Archie Moore was the chairman of our organization. His son was the trainer. And I became his publicist because he had two books. And one was his autobiography by my mentor, Dr. Marilyn Durow. Um, God rest both their souls. But we traveled all over Europe and promoted his book. And it was well received. He was awesome. I learned so much. He's one of the few that are gentlemen in this business, but uh, he had he had achieved records that will never be broken. Well over 130 knockouts in his yes. in his career. No I'm one's going. No yeah. one is going to do that unless they start now. He was a bad man. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yes. and still strong at his early 80s. Right. I mean, let's just say you didn't want to upset him for mm -hmm. any no, you just whatever. Just why? <laughs> because uh, he he's, he's definitely a gentleman, like I said. But he's all about self-defense. We were in Italy and went to a classroom, and he taught them self-defense. 
He said, if you don't want to fight, you don't have to. But if you have the right stance, if you have the right look, and you're confident, no one's going to bother you. And as a casting director, you've done casting directing also? I mean, you're a known casting director? Yes. Um, what about it? Well, let's just say that I am who you need me to be when it comes to creating from beginning to end your project. Okay. I want to make it happen. Plus, having clients doesn't hurt. So that way, you can easily be placed in the right role, right? So, with wearing so many hats, how do you give? How do you figure out what to give the attention or the love to? Uh, it really has to do with what is the timeline okay. for each one. Very good. And you manage it as best you can. It doesn't always work out the way you want. Why? Because life isn't like that. You know, you can plan whatever you want to plan, but things happen. Look what happened with COVID. Right. No one who knew. But I did produce a film during COVID. Really? We just limited the cast. Uh, we made sure that everybody was tested every day and um, no one got sick. And the movie is on streaming platforms, Social Disturbance. It's called so Social Disturbance? Absolutely, yes. Okay, is it relative to some things that happened around that time? Um, well, our leading actress, Leon Mendoza, who's also one of the voices on Disney's Proud Family, okay. um, really knew how to just make it work. And yes, she had some issues, um, so being a loner and isolated, she was constantly ordering from Amazon, FedEx, whatever, UPS. So that was her way of a connection to the outside world. But she really had a more sinister plan mm. uh, behind someone who rejected her when she didn't look like she looked doing the present. You know, someone that was not considered beautiful or attractive or sexy. So she found a person that, you know, it's one of those things where you look back at your high school days and you decide who are the ones that need to be taught a lesson because they didn't treat you right. And she found out that he was a delivery guy. There you go. Let's circle back to the Kwanzaa celebration. I myself didn't understand Kwanzaa for many years when I was growing up. And years later, when my son was about 15, he looked at me one day and said, what's Kwanzaa? And I said, you know, I'm not sure. And so I actually wrote a poem about Kwanzaa um, to help him understand it. And I set it to the theme to Twas the Night Before Christmas. But um, I never did anything with it. So I'm happy to see someone who's doing something with it. Yeah. And do you want this to be a yearly celebration play? Or do you see this play going somewhere? What's your overall hope for the play Harambe, Harambe? Well, and that means, folks, all pulled together. Yes. Because that's what we need to do, right? Yes. So, yes, every year, uh, I was told by the Roby they would like to make it part of their season, okay. which is amazing. Uh, we don't have enough about that. And also, my, my idea of this is to make it a daily affirmation not just one week out of the year, just like everything else, not just 30 days for Black History Month, not just we, you know, the weekend for Martin Luther King. Uh, we need to really take those seven principles and work that in to how we move throughout life, how we relate to other people. And that's really what that's about. So it's not just a teaching moment, because the way that I presented this story is, is a professor who, young, know, and he decides to research his roots, he finds out, finds out it's, it's uh, in Ghana. He goes there and he you know, gets immersed into that, comes back to the university that he teaches at so that he can incorporate that in his, you, you might say, black history you know, type of uh, uh, classroom. Right. But he takes it deeper than that because he, taught, he incorporates what has happened in the past to us, what is going on right now in our present, including, you know, all the senseless murders that have been, you know, uh, yes, throughout the world. And then how we look towards the future and with the principles being part of our narrative. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ironic that something like Kwanzaa hasn't been 
more openly embraced because some of the principles, I know them, unity, self-determination, collective responsibility, those are things that we all should embrace. Yes, faith. The faith, which is Imani, yes, yes, which is the first principle. And uh, purpose. And purpose, yes. Nia. Nia, purpose of being. Yes, See? Yes, yes. So these are things that we should all embrace. Absolutely. Not just people of African descent. Right. Because, and personally, I think that, I think, and this is my own personal thought, mm -hmm. that these, that a lot of these things divide. It's, it's, you have this, you have that. We all should come together. My previous guest was Raffles Van Exel, who penned a, a socially conscious song called Why Oh Why. And yes. it's the same thought that why can't we, who was that years ago that did a song, Why Can't We Live Together? Do you remember that song, you know? Uh, I don't know, I think it was more about relationships, but. Um, well, it, yeah, but Relationships are mean. everything. <laughs> right. It starts well, with yes. relationships. That's true. That's it true. It really does. Yes, it does. It does. It's. I have something I've been working on for years called See Humans. Mm -hmm. When I, I lived in Singapore years ago, and I remember this man was selling something, and he rang the be, the buzzer, and I came to the steps. He said, "Where are you from?" I said, "Huh?" He said, "Where are you from?" I said, "Earth." He said, "No, where are you from?" <laughs> I said, "Earth." He said. Brother, where are you from? I said, Earth. He said, oh, never mind. Because That's a good answer, though. he like wanted to put me in a box. Yes. Oh, you're from America. Then guess what? Oh, you're from Africa. Then guess what? Yeah. And we do that. It's, so see humans is my hope that one day we all will do that. Because that nice. we're all from Earth. Yeah. So let's talk more about the play. What can goers to the play expect? Uh, well, they can expect to be enlightened. Okay. Uh, this, the language can be strong, so really? you know, be, take, bring your grown-up mind and uh, learn and just reflect on how maybe you can make some changes in your life and those around you from knowing more about the principles and the history of what we've gone through as black people or people of color. So I will say that we are doing a live uh, theater, theater reading on Sunday, January the 15th um, at 3 p.m. and it's at the Roby Theater, which is downtown Los Angeles on Spring and uh, it's basically free admission, but we love love donations of $10 because we want to keep the curtains continue to rise up. We know it's not Kwanzaa right. day or week, but it is Martin Luther King's birthday and he's always said, as we know, it's all about peace and getting along, right? So we will have a full stage play at okay. the end of the year, December 26th to January 1st at the Roby Theater. And we'd love for you to sign up for the newsletter, subscribe to the, the uh, YouTube channel, and stay informed. That's not the only play that, is, that goes on at the Roby. It is a tremendous amount of talent that live on stage, and it's just a beautiful thing. Well, thank you. We are live streaming on livestreamers.com. I'm TJ Johnson, Marie LaMail. Today's show is shot at the beautiful Salt Cave here in Beverly Hills and executive produced by Platinum Star Media, Garson Silvers Entertainment, Raw Entertainment, and livestreamers.com. I would like to thank our engineers, our camera people, and you out there. Please.